Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov2 as usual and today I've got another best of the rest video lined up for you guys. This is Roja Albania in uh, Nashorn and he's in a very unlucky matchup here. This is a confrontation game on El Haluf and he's a tier 6 tank destroyer in a tier 8 game and there are lots of tier 8 tanks and lots of tier 7 tanks. So he's not going to have a very easy game here but if there is a tier 6 tank that can cope with tier 8 games, it will be the Nashorn because it gets this amazing 88mm gun with, let's quickly check the penetration, it's over 200, yeah, it's 203 millimeters of penetration. So that's more than enough to slice through a tier 8 heavy tank's armor if you know where to aim. So, Roja has located in the southern end of this map and he's getting ready to snipe enemies that might advance along that kind of um, road leading up to the enemy base and there's a Tiger 1 with him and also uh, Ally Tiger 2 is coming up to join him. Now as I mentioned before this is a confrontation game so it's the German against the British and really just looking at the matchup I'd say the Germans have got the better tank really, the better tanks in this situation because they've got stuff like the Ferdinand, the Rheinmetall, uh, the Jagdpanzer, the Tiger and the British get the Churchill 7, the Black Prince, I mean the Carnarvon and the 8015 are good tanks, but except for them, the British matchup, uh, the, the, the British lineup is not very good really. So, Roja picks up a kill on an enemy Churchill 7, and he nearly <laughs> falls down that cliff right there. He can just avoid it, and now he's positioning here again. But it doesn't really look like any other enemies are going to appear here. So you can see that the Tiger 1 is starting to relocate. And Roja is still waiting a little bit, but it, there's not much action going on here. Now you can see that his allies are involved in a fight at the A2A3 area, but still, right now, at this point, there is not any enemy contact. Now there's a heavy tank spotted uh, in the northwest. Two tanks, but uh, still, this game is quite slow at the moment. And interestingly you will notice that none of the tanks on either teams have decided to go down to this kind of yeah, this kind of valley in uh, the middle between the two mountains here. Uh, in the south where usually medium tanks go to fight it out on El Haluf early in the game. So Roja has decided to advance because there's not much going on where he was, so he decides to be more aggressive. And he has to be very careful because he only has got 600 hit points. And he's in a tier 8 game. And he's got no armor. So basically, any tier 8 tank can 2 or 3 shot him. So he has to be played very carefully. Now, he's being very aggressive here. And there's an enemy Churchill 7, but he's driving away from Roja. And yeah, I apologize that this game's kind of a bit slow paced at the moment, but I promise you that it's going to pick up in a few minutes. So Knaven was spotted up there. And one thing that I forgot to mention about the Nashorn is that it's got really, really good view range because it's an open top vehicle. So Roja is able to pull off some good spots here too. As you can see when he pokes over this ridge there. So there's a Carnarvon and you can see he's been spotted, so he puts a great clutch shot into the Carnarvon and draws back into cover before the AT-15 can put another shot into him. Now it was a real shame, did I, did I say put a shot into the Carnarvon? I meant the Cromwell, I'm sorry. Uh, it was a shame that he did manage to one shot the Cromwell, he had a below average damage roll. With the average damage roll of 240, I think he would have been able to uh, one hit the Cromwell. I'm not quite sure if he, did he see somebody there? I didn't pay attention. but. Anyway, he fired a blind shot, and I'm just going to quickly speed up the game a bit here, because not all that much happens now. So, Roja is relocating, and he's advancing behind this kind of little hill in the center. So, now there are two enemy tanks spotted ahead, uh, a Centurion 1 and a Black Prince. Can we get shots at them? It doesn't look like it. And the score is 77, so things are looking very, very even. But uh, actually, I think both, yeah, both teams have got the same amount of tier 8 tanks. Now the enemy AT-15 went down. I 
and Roha here is desperately trying to get some shots in, but uh, this game is just being really slow. The score's 8 to 7 now, and they're 6 minutes into the game. So Roha is telling the Lover driver to fall back, which is the right decision, really, because the Lover is kind of outnumbered there. And can we get a shot of the Black Prince now? No, doesn't seem like it. Okay, so Roha is now driving up the hill, probably trying to get some more spots off. But he decides to go for the Black Prince instead and try to get some shots. So what he does now is he drives around this hill here. And he actually wants to advance, I think. But then he sees that the Carnarvon is being very aggressive. And he decides to retreat in order to counter that Carnarvon. And now there's a Cromwell up there. Maybe we can hit the Cromwell. Oh yeah, it's looking good. Great shot. Second kill. Nice job. The score's 10 to 8 now. And the Lover went down though. So that's not very good because the Lover is one of the best tanks on their team. So... Oh, there's the Black Prince again. I, it looks like we can get a shot out of the Black Prince here, actually. Come on. Great shot. Very good. That was actually very clutch, but we could make it happen. Uh, Roha picked up his third kill there. And now he's being aggressive. He knows where about the Carnarvon is. And this allied uh, Rheinmetall Borsig Waffentrager is being very aggressive, but he hasn't spotted the Carnarvon yet. So, I, th oh no, actually, I think that's the wreck of the Carnarvon, so the Carnarvon must have died earlier. So that means the enemy Carnarvon is still up there with the AT-15, probably. And we've got a fairly good idea now where all the enemy tanks are. The score's 11 to 8. And, oh yeah, there's the Carnarvon. Roha has to be very careful here because the Carnarvon can really chew him to bits of his DPM. But it looks like the Carnarvon hasn't got the gun depression to hit Roha. And uh, Roha has managed to hit his front drive wheel, uh, putting off his track. And now the Carnarvon is basically permit track because Roha Albania can put shot after shot through the front drive wheel of his British tier 8 heavy tank and just keep him in place. I'm not sure why the Carnarvon is not repairing his track. Maybe he's too stupid. Maybe he just has got a repair kit, or maybe he's already used it. But he's just sitting there and letting Roha just chew up all his hit points, basically. 1,600 free damage for Roha. <laughs> and the Carnarvon fires a shot in frustration against the rock just before he goes down. So, <laughs> at least he can say he went down fighting. <laughs> so, yeah, that was 1,600 hit points damage for Roha. Right there, very good play there. Hitting the front drive wheel from a very tricky angle, that was very good, and <laughs> there's the enemy artillery, the FE-403, oh no, it's 304, sorry, the tier 6 British artillery, this artillery is quite funny because it can do 70, it can go at 72 kilometers, I think, so uh, Roha puts one shot into him, and <laughs> the second shot ammo racks him, doing only 37 damage, but you know, <laughs> that was quite lol. <laughs> So, yeah, Roha's on five kills now. He's in for a top gun. He only needs one kill more to get the six kills and the top gun medal. And he knows now where the Black Prince and the AT-15 are about. They both are at H3. So, what he does here is quite interesting because usually what I would do is I would flank round and I would go round, I would go to F3 and then come uh, at the AT-15 and the BP from the rear. However, what Roha is doing here, probably, if you think about it more thoroughly, is more intelligent. Because the Black Prince and the AT-15 both spotted Roha attacking the Carnarvon. And that's why they probably know that Roha, or think that Roha will be going round the other way. And now the fact that Roha is advancing from the other side uh, is kind of a bit of a surprise. Also, if you look at the map we can see that there's an allied Ferdinand advancing from the north and that means that they've kind of got these two uh, British enemy tanks between the two of them and can kind of involve them in a, a kind of a two-flank combat which is uh, better for them and also what you can see him do here is if, you ha if he had gone round the rear 
the AT-15 and the Black Prince could have rushed him and chewed him to bits with their DPM. But the fact that he is in cover behind these rocks means that if the AT-15 decides to rush him, he will be sniped by the Tiger 1, the Tiger 2 and the VK 3002D. And that means that the AT-15 is basically, uh, he cannot move, he has to stay where he is because if he pokes around, uh, because he's being spotted by Roja Albania, he will be absolutely obliterated. So uh, the play by Roja here was actually quite good. Now he lets the Tiger 2 advance and tank for him. The AT-15 only tracks the Tiger 2, which allows Roja to take advantage of the AT-15's reload and Sniper's Cupola <laughs> getting his top gun. Very nice shot, very good play there in the Nashorn because the Nashorn really is not designed to take hits. So that was very good and I do not know where this Black Prince is looking but Roja is coming in and can we get the kill? Yes, 7 kills for Roja Albania here on El Halouf in a tier 8 game with a tier 6 German tank destroyer. Very very well played. Uh, I wouldn't say that he carried his game, uh, his team through this game, but he definitely had the biggest contribution and it definitely helped secure the win. And uh, if he hadn't been on the team, I think it's fair to say that they probably would have lost. So, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for sending this replay in, Roja. And let's have a look at the post game stats to get a more detailed view of how he performed in this game. So, Roja Albania got 46,318 credits and 1,869 experience for that game. That was non double and without a premium account. That was enough to get him his mastery badge, ace tanker, and a top gun medal. And in the team score, we can see that he managed to pick out 1,869 base experience. That's a lot of experience. He got, got 7 kills and 2,882 damage, which is really nice. And we can see that the second best uh, player on his team was the Hummel, who did really well too, getting 3,800 damage and 1,200 base experience. And this Lover here did really well too. On the enemy team, well, this Carnarvon here actually played very well, and the AT-15 and the Centurion Mark 1 also. In the detailed report, we can see that he fired 19 shots, of which 16 hit and 16 penetrated, which is quite nice. That allowed him to do 2,882 damage in total. He didn't receive any hits and no penetrating hits, which shows that he uh, played this tank correctly, because you really should not be taking hits in these German glass cannon tank destroyers. He managed also to deal out 2,354 spotting damage, which is really nice. And that really contributed to his experience score, because usually you do not get this much experience for just doing this much damage. And that's thanks to his good view range, which he put to great use. And he also travelled quite far. He didn't run a premium account, but still he was able to run a massive profit. And he got this total amount of base experience, which is really good. So, yeah, thanks a lot, Roja Albania, for sending in this game. It was a joy to watch, although the first few minutes were a bit boring, I will say. But in the end, this game was really exciting. And I hope it just really showed the Nashorn for you guys and uh, what you can do in it. And thanks a lot again, Roja Albania, for sending it in. So I've got, I've probably got a patch 9.0 preview coming up tomorrow, maybe or the review or something, I'll have a look. But anyway, uh, stay tuned for more Best of the Rest videos, and I will have the winners coming up in one or two weeks' time. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you then, or out there on the battlefield. Uh, thanks for watching, as usual, and bye-bye.